Morning, Trainiacs. I am finishing a four hour Zwift ride. That's not a flex, like, it's real. And my brain is officially mush. So what better time to give advice on how to create a triathlon training plan. This is specifically going to be for beginner triathletes who are weak swimmers doing a half Ironman distance. Could be 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 20 weeks, 24 weeks. However much time you've got, we're going to address it. We are going to address the three biggest things that you've got to get right to be prepared for your race. Those three things being getting your training schedule right, making sure that the swim is not intimidating for you and does not ruin the rest of your race, and that you know what gear to buy without breaking the bank. I got five more minutes left. I'll come back to you after this when my brain is situated. So as you start getting ready for new goals in 2020, a lot of people start thinking about doing a longer distance, or there are a lot of people that bucket list want to start off working their way towards a half Ironman. The big things that hold people back are, can I ever go that long? Spoiler alert, yes. Endurance is very easy to build, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it here next. Are you gonna be able to do the swim? Yes. We're gonna be able to get you to the point that swimming is basically like coordinated floating. And then next is it's going to be too expensive. Well, I'm gonna tell you just a handful of items that you need to get you to the race with just what you need so that you don't break the bank and you can decide later if you're ready to invest big dough. So let's get those three things figured out for you. So the first thing that you've got to get right is the training. And the first thing that people wonder is, well, how much am I going to need to train? Is it going to be huge amounts of effort, time away from family, work, friends, real life, things like that? Well, here's a guide that we have on teamtrainiac.com. One thing to really keep in mind with this guide is that there are different goals for everyone. In my case, my goal is to get to Kona someday, make it to the world championships. But in some cases, people's goals might be just to finish. So what we've created here on teamtrainiac.com is how many workouts you need to do approximately based on your specific goals. So let's look here at for a 70.3, doing just four to seven workouts a week, finishing becomes questionable. If you're really fit coming into it, you have a sports background, sure, you can probably finish. Most people are in the finish feeling strong. You just don't wanna have a bad experience. You wanna be confident walking up to the start line of the race that you've done what you need to do and you're confident in how the day is going to unfold. So for that, you need to do around eight to 10 workouts that are properly designed. Now, how do you design those workouts? What are those workouts? That's where we have here, again, on teamtrainiac.com, all of this is prompted when people create their settings on their account, is if you're a swim-focused athlete and you wanna get that eight to 10 workouts in, let's just say you are in the nine workouts category, you wanna make sure that you get the right types of workouts in and that the workouts are on the right days because if you design the week incorrectly, you might be leading yourself to injury, you might be under preparing yourself, you might be over training yourself. You also might not be focusing on the right things. So for an athlete who wants to focus on improving their swim, what a week should look like is Monday, an easy recovery swim. Tuesday, an intense bike. Wednesday, this is the main run. This is a run that builds up in duration longer and longer, and I'll explain how. Thursday, a recovery bike and a strength day. Friday, a technique swim, kind of an easier swim. Saturday, main bike. This is the big bike that builds up longer and longer. 
followed by a brick run, and then Sunday is the main swim. We want to make sure that you're swimming enough to succeed in the swim. If you start off with a bad swim, you aren't going to do well. And three swims per week is kind of the starting point of starting to make progress in swimming. We also want to space those swims out. So that's why we have them Sunday, Friday, and Monday. Spaces them out a little bit. And it also allows us here to have a recovery swim after a bigger weekend where you're gonna be a little bit beat up from that big bike and the main brick run. So then we give you a day here on Monday to recover. We also give you a day on Friday to just kind of prepare for the weekend because these two here are very light intensive days. They're not very destructive on the body. Finally, how long does all this need to be? Well, the recovery swim, I would say could be as little as 30 to 40 minutes. The intense bike, 30 to 40 minutes as long as it's really intense. This is a hit bike. The main run, you wanna build up to the point that you get to a 25 kilometer run. Recovery bike can be as little as 30 minutes, as much as 60. Strength, only about 30 minutes, that's lots. Technique swim, again, only about 30 to 40 minutes. The main bike, and you wanna build your way up to about 120K bike. The main brick run, only needs to be a max of about 30 minutes long. The main swim here needs to build up to about 75 minutes long. So those are some guidelines, all of the exact workouts. We could talk for, well, I've written 7,000 of them and with algorithms and things on teamtrainiac.com, it gets delivered to you because it's quite intense what the actual workouts are in this video would be five days long. I think it's already fairly long. Next, let's address the swimming. The test that I use is that if you can swim 400 meters or yards continuously without feeling out of breath whatsoever at the end and without taking a break at any of the walls while you're turning, then you're ready to start doing workouts. If you're not yet ready to start doing workouts, your time is best going to be spent working on develop comfort and basic fundamentals in the water. And for that, I'd... I'd recommend a phenomenal book written by a really good looking triathlete called Triathlon Swimming Foundations. You can get the paperback book at any Amazon all around the world. You can get an ebook and the audiobook at triathlonswimmingfoundations.com. It'll straighten out all your swim problems. Just take a look at the reviews, it works. And then once you've developed that basic ability to be comfortable in the water and have basic form so that the rest of the race isn't suffering as a result of the swim taking a lot out of you, you need to do a few things. Make sure that you get into open water four to six times in either the wetsuit or the swim skin that you're gonna be racing in so that you can get comfortable in the open water and your wetsuit and swim skin can stretch out a little bit so you don't get that this is so tight kind of feeling. You also, in the two months leading up to the race, you wanna start doing some deck ups in the pool so that your body gets used to standing up, rerouting the blood flow really quickly. It's the same principle as doing a brick run, going from the bike to the run really quickly. This is making sure that your heart rate doesn't shoot through the roof in transition one, again, being detrimental for the rest of the race. And then finally, you wanna swim with some people around you. So if you have a swim crew that you can work with, just getting used to having people around you so that it's not terrifying when you get in the water, that's about all you need to do. Now, let's talk about the gear that you need. There are only really seven pieces of critical gear that I think people need. And you can get all of this for probably under $1,000 if you already have access to a bike. First thing that you need to get is a wetsuit. I recommend buying a very inexpensive wetsuit for your first race. There's an Xterra one on Amazon that costs $140. And I recommend doing this because renting a wetsuit is probably about $100. And then even if you don't end up continuing on with triathlon, you can probably sell the Xterra wetsuit for probably about $100 and you won't be sitting in somebody else's pee. Trust me, it's there. 
Next, I recommend that you buy a pair of very basic mirrored goggles, and you can buy these for about $15. The reason I recommend mirrored goggles with basic kind of profile, not these big things, is because you can wear them very easily in the pool, and that mirrored finish is going to help you with reducing the glare on the water when you get into open water. So you can use it in open water, you can use it in the pool. Cheaper. Next, I recommend that you buy yourself a pair of tri shorts, not cycling shorts. If you're tight on money and you don't want to buy a pair of swim trunks and a triathlon kit, just go with tri shorts because the chamois in them is so minimal that you can use them as swim trunks. You can also use it as biking shorts and you can use it as running shorts. Cycling shorts, you can't really swim in. Too much diaper butt. Speedo or jammers, you can't really bike in because there's no chamois. But tri shorts with a really minimal chamois can kind of serve all purposes. The reverse goes for a cycling top. I'd recommend getting a cycling top instead of a tri top. And why I recommend this is because you can cycle in a cycling top and you can race in a triathlon in a cycling top that's fitted tightly to you. But a tri top is really best just for triathlon when you don't really necessarily want to do all of your training in a tri top because all of the shoulders are exposed and it's just not as practical. The pockets aren't big enough. You can get shoulder sunburns if you are translucent like me. Just a more versatile option. Next, use whatever bike and whatever helmet you have. Literally, whatever bike and whatever helmet you have. Don't go and feel like you've got to spend thousands of dollars if that's an issue to you. What I do recommend getting is a pair of clip-on aero bars. About 80 to 85% of the drag that you have to push through the air is created by your body. And if you can just get a $20 pair of clip-on aero bars and get comfortable in that tucked in position, you're gonna be way more aerodynamic than even if you had a fancy $3,000 road bike with no clip-on aero bars, but you were up on the hoods. That that is kind of counterintuitive. And then finally, a decent pair of running shoes. And this is a decent pair of running shoes, something that is meant for running, something that you didn't buy for like $20. We're talking shoes that cost about $100 thereabouts and up because this is gonna have the most cushioning. And as you're getting used to running more frequently, you wanna have shoes that are designed properly for running to help avoid injuries because that's what's going to get you to the race and reach those goals that we laid out. Now, you're still probably wondering, how do I actually design a training plan? Not really ready for a coach? Well, a couple of options. Number one, you can go to triathlonterran.com forward slash plan template, and you put in the distance of the race that you wanna do, how many workouts a week that you want to do, and when the race is, and it'll give you kind of a skeleton of a week and a build. So you can use that. It doesn't have any workout details because we save that for the next option, teamtrainiac.com. That's our online training program where for just 57 bucks a month, you get every single workout. You get audio files guiding you with how to do these workouts. So you start understanding what all the lingo means. You get free stuff from all of our sponsors. You can get one-on-one -on -one consultations from professional triathlon coaches and professional triathletes for like, a fraction of if you had hired an actual triathlon coach and you get to be with one of the biggest coolest triathlon clubs in the world we are in between about 500 and a thousand members and they're all really solid people and we've got a social media component so that you can all help each other out with questions or just motivate each other as races come up and training gets hard and of course, check out Triathlon Swimming Foundations on all the Amazons across the world, or if you're more into eBooks and audiobooks, triathlonswimmingfoundations.com. That's a whole lot of calls to action for one video. I think that's a long video. Hopefully this helped a fair bit. Very excited. If you're watching this, that means that you are probably thinking about doing one of your first half Ironmans this year. I think it's fantastic distance, just long enough to be really challenging, but just short enough to be really practical for real life. So good on you. Keep me posted on how it goes. Later, Trainiacs.